So I chose this fast track, ease of doing business, as compared to the conventional <laughs> way. That's a new approach. Uh, yesterday, prior to the CNN interview with Christiane Amanpour, she asked me, why New York? Um, I said, if you can do it in New York, you can do it anywhere. New York, New York. I mean, you're familiar with the song. Now, um, I'm not going to bore you with the uh, detailed analysis of our uh, Madani economic framework, but let me share with you the concerns that we have in the past. Uh, White was right, of course, sorry, it's Zafrol here, Ambassador, and, and all the dignitaries here, including Deputy Premier from Sarawak, Deputy Chief Minister from Sabah, to signal the importance of this uh, meeting. Now, we have done remarkably well, yes, uh, but we also acknowledge the fact that we are poor and some setback on the issue of governance, of clarity in policies. Now, having said that, when we embark on this new administration, now nine months after we assume uh, office, the thrust is, of course, to ensure that issues of governance, which include ease of doing business, clarity of policies, and ridding the country of many of the negative impact of the perception that this is uh, essentially uh, mined by corrupt practices. It's a challenge because I remember uh, visiting New York in 2019, prior to COVID. That perception seems to be strong among many of the business entities here. And we acknowledge that. Of course, not entirely true. It's not, it's not uh, fair. Uh, uh, to then consider the whole country as uh, impacted by the problem of corruption. But we acknowledge that things need to change, and we have to use the opportunity to affect change in Malaysia. And as you say, yes, we have done so, our level best. And uh, at the cost, uh, initial political uncertainties. But after five, six months, we are on track. Uh, politically, it's very stable. We have two-third majority in parliament, and I don't think we need more than that, and we become very autocratic regime, which all leaders have a tendency to like it that way. And so, be it, we should have a tough, vigorous opposition. And um, with that, we embark on very clear uh, policies. We started with the economic Economy Madani framework. Why? Because we want to show that whilst we support the notion of sustainability and all the necessary ingredients that could propel the economy, we also have to acknowledge some of the concerns that um, we have to face in the changing geopolitical atmosphere, our reliance. Uh, Traditionally, in the um, investors from Europe and America, and now with the changing pattern, more trade investments from China, but how to navigate to ensure our centrality and to remain fiercely independent in the face of strong forces. And. Um, the economic framework, of course, have to deal with some of the concerns affecting the country. It is a multiracial, multireligious country. We want to make sure that the policy will champion the rights of all Malaysians. That we will consider our duty to champion the cause, the concerns, and that no segment of society would feel marginalized, ignored, or discriminated. It's a challenging, challenging task because the majority of Malays in the country, of course, feels that after independence, not much has been done, and um, therefore they need to be reassured. 
At the same time, the ethnic minorities must uh, be given that sense of confidence that after more than six decades of independence, they cannot be treated as second-class citizens. Now, to navigate this, of course, is a major and other task. But we are fortunate that notwithstanding all the pressures that we have and the rise of fascism in, in, in some parts of Europe and the uh, trend towards the far right in many countries in the West, and incidents of uh, strong uh, intimidation, harassment against minorities in some countries were able to navigate and ensure stability in this country. And we have a government that represents the core interests and wishes of the majority Malays at the same time having to assure the minorities and Sabah Strawa that they have a part and a major role to play in this country. So that aside, we then embark on policies. The major thrust of our policy is our niche, which Malaysia has as compared to many of the countries in the region. So the first major policy pronouncement is the energy transition. We have the uh, commitment to focus on renewable energy. We have the resources and we have uh, clear guidelines and policies and um, with, with uh, capacity in Peninsula, and more so Sabah and Sarawak, even to be able to export to Singapore, which is of course creating major demand. So you can, so you, uh, related to this, you have data centers mushrooming in Johor and in Sabah Jaya, partly for the requirements, increase uh, requirements in the country, but also um, the limited space in Singapore that would have to depend on data centers in the uh, neighborhood in Malaysia. Then, of course, the industrial master plan. I'm saying this is, this is we are talking about five, six months. We have to really focus on these issues. And the NASA plan, master plan is, of course, a major shift from the traditional notion of what industrial master plan can do to look about the uh, potential that we have in various states, various uh, regions in the country, and a shift from sectors to mission-based. Um, of course, Afro is here. You can, the difficult questions should be un de dealt by him and the uh, Securities Commission and the Bank Negara, and Prime Ministers should only give the major guidelines. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 it's just on a lighter note. And, and uh, after that uh, policy pronouncement on the Industrial Master Plan, <laughs> um, but on the midterm review of the second Malaysia Plan, or 12th Malaysia Plan. No. You know, we are uh, uh, used to, which is not the case here in many Western countries, but um, initially after independence, we were quite guided by the need to have plans, five-year plans, um, probably at that time a bit left of centre, uh, learning from the experience in the East. Um, some criticised that, of course, this five-year plan was initiated essentially by Vladimir Lenin. Uh, but let me assure you, despite the fact that it is a five-year plan, it is a mix of a capitalist plan with some concerns about the welfare of the uh, general people, particularly the urban poor and the rural heartland. But so that's why we need uh, to have a review as a standard practice, but a major shift because the Midterm review of the 12th Malaysia Plan takes into consideration new areas like renewable energy, like transform, um, digital transformation, and the um, renewable energy will include new sources, including uh, uh, hydrogen and um, rare earth, which which um, could provide some. A uh, new avenue for growth in the country with stringent um, requirements because of the concerns and the new awareness about environment, which was not the case in the past. 
And uh, beyond that, of course, um, we will have to refocus on the budget which will be announced middle of next month. Now, what are the concerns? Of course, that would uh, include the issues of um, um, financial uh, procedures, procurement policies, um, ease of doing business, which, uh, of course, has been a major concern to the investing community and community public. That's why we have to uh, not only announce our intention on the issue of um, uh, procurement policies, but uh, we have to then introduce adequate legislation so that there is transparency and clarity in procurement and budget uh, policies. And um, that will be, of course, announced. Hopefully, the legislation, uh, the bill will be tabled prior to the budget um, announcement, um, because otherwise um, we, there's a tendency just to make pronouncements, but then um, short of uh, practical uh, action uh, to support these policies. So hopefully, uh, this can be done. And um, we would, of course, uh, then, uh, the, the, well, the final issue that I want to raise is the issue of um, Malaysia vis-a-vis -vis United States or the West and China. China, of course, becomes a key player in the region, trade investments. But as you know, um, though there's a recent increase in terms of investments and trade with China, United States have been the traditional player, and the total investments is still number one. Total investments into Malaysia, United States remain as number one. And, and uh, not only that, uh, we have benefited immensely from the involvement of U.S. companies and investments into Malaysia. I'll give you one example. Uh, when, when Intel embarked upon uh, the investments in Malaysia, into Malaysia, and um, decided to set up a training and research center in Penang, the biggest, the most successful, the most important outside the United States. And until today, it is growing, it's still expanding, which means um, the confidence level and the ease of uh, doing business seems to improve with the times. Now, um, Amazon Web Service announced major investments recently. From Europe, Infineon announced a 5 billion euro investment, which, which means that sense of confidence is there. And I think we have managed to uh, attract uh, and to, to ensure that Malaysia remained as an attractive uh, destination for foreign direct investments. Um, but when it comes to um, China, as, uh, as uh, mentioned uh, this morning with uh, the US Business Council, um, uh, dinner with Kamala Harris, the Vice President, in Jakarta. Of course, she did express some of the concern whether we are teaching towards uh, China. My answer is unequivocal. Uh, we are fiercely independent. Uh, the United States have been our traditional ally, and we welcome their participation and many issues that we share with the United States. And on a personal note, I said all those days, my tribulation and predicament, the United States, they, whether it's under President Clinton or President Bush, has been totally supportive and championing my cause. And uh, of course, I'm indebted uh, to them in the United States for very positive, dynamic foreign policy. Uh, we, with China, in the last years, and of course, in this administration, we have um, excellent relations. And, and um, that, to me, would uh, place Malaysia in the region in a unique position to utilize 
and exploit this opportunity and engage to the benefit of U.S. investors and Chinese investors. And I'm not encouraging this tilt between China and the United States. It doesn't help us. In fact, the tension is worrying as much as the Ukraine-Russia uh, conflict because uh, it will cause anxiety and concern among countries. But um, given the stark realities of geopolitics today, that would be temporarily, in spite of these difficulties, would be of immense benefit to Malaysia and for the strategic, um, geopolitical, and for investment and trade. And, uh, and, and this is happening, and I would uh, seek your support and understanding because we would uh, be able to benefit, not from benefit, from, it doesn't sound right, I think, politically, if I say we we'll benefit from the tension between the United States and China. But I'm saying that probably we will be able to use our small uh, role to reduce this tension, at least among the investing and business uh, community. <laughs> I, I will deal with some specific questions and uh, in the uh, Q&A session, uh, and, and my colleagues would, of course, be of assistance. Uh, I have suffered so much in my life, so please don't ask me difficult questions. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, and then I think following that, of course, the Governor and the Security Commission would, would be uh, answering some other questions. I'm just joking. You're, it's a free country. <laughs> and Malaysia believe in democratic accountability. So no holes barred. Uh, as long as you provide me good lunch, anything goes. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, Dato Sri.